Hey YouTube and all my fellow remodelers, it is Robert back here right from my own bathroom and today's video I wanted to share with you guys some more tips for small spaces. I've done another video where I kind of talked about working in a small kitchen and doing some remodeling there to enhance the size and feel of the space. And I'm gonna now show you guys how we would do that in a small bathroom. Um, my particular bathroom is a very common footprint. I'll show you guys some pictures of it in a moment, but you'll notice it's probably a bathroom that you've seen before where you walk through the door and you immediately have a 30 inch vanity, a toilet, and then a tub or shower. Um, in some homes, that's the master bathroom, and in a lot of homes, that's a guest bathroom. But either way, you kind of have that three-piece set there of your vanity, your toilet, and then your tub or shower. And usually these rooms are only maybe five foot wide and then anywhere from about eight to nine foot deep. And the shower portion usually is about two and a half to three foot of that, leaving your actual bathroom space usually somewhere in that five to uh, six foot by five foot wide uh, range. So, you know, we're talking 25, 30 square feet total of your bathroom space, plus, you know, uh, roughly about 15 square feet or so for your shower. So not huge areas, but a very, very common footprint. And I'm gonna show you guys some quick tricks as to how we can at least make that area feel as big as it possibly can. So prior to the remodel, when I first purchased this home, the bathroom featured a white thermofoiled cabinet with a Corian countertop that had an integrated sink right into it, and then a medicine cabinet uh, up above with the mirror, you know, on the front. Uh, next to that, we had the toilet and then a fiberglass solid unit shower stall. Uh, that had two built-in seats, as you'll notice, as well as a couple of uh, like soap uh, shelves in each corner. And so it was just all kind of one molded piece. We also had a vinyl uh, flooring in the bathroom area. And, you know, things in there were in overall good shape, but it was very dated and, you know, there was definitely some staining uh, noticeable in the shower stall. Uh, and it just you know, the shower curtain doesn't do a smaller area any favors because again, it impedes your ability to actually see the full size of the room. So some of the first things that I knew I wanted to do was tear out that whole shower, replace it with tile, and take that all the way to the ceiling so that we would make the area a little bit taller, as well as being able to move the shower head up higher. Um, I'm not a real tall person, but for you know, most people that shower head being a little higher is definitely a benefit. I also wanted to get rid of the old white vanity cabinet and move to something that was a little bit more open bodied on the cabinet, something just with a couple of shelves down below, create a little bit of that kind of spa feel with it and just be able to see more of that wall space as well. I did not have any real preference for the countertop material, although I figured I'd probably move towards a granite or quartz top uh, with an undermount sink. As I was looking at pictures and coming up with ideas, I ended up designing and building my own cabinet base. And then I decided to go ahead and just do a cherry wood top with a drop-in farm style sink. Now, I'm not a big fan of vessel sinks, but I actually really have come to enjoy using the sink that I, I put in my bathroom here now. Uh, it works really well. I still have some countertop space on top and I think it's just a very clean look. I also wanted to ditch the medicine cabinet and move to something that was much more subtle, much more slim that I could just have against the wall and not hanging out over the cabinet space. Again, little details, but it really helps with all those things to kind of make the room feel larger in every little way and they really add up quickly. And again, shower curtains certainly have a place and can work well in some bathrooms, but I knew for the purpose of trying to make my bathroom feel larger and more open that I wanted to eliminate that and move to glass so that again, we could see all the way to the back wall of the bathroom. All right, now here we are back in the bathroom, kind of starting from the top here. Uh, I left the lights. It was uh, not an expense that I really felt like dealing with at the moment, so they work fine. And I may change them down the road, but like I said, for now they work really well. Uh, this mirror, however, I picked up on Amazon and just absolutely love this. It was a couple hundred dollars, but the wood matched so well 
with the cherry wood countertop that I had just finished. And you can see it's just a very slim profile, only comes off the wall maybe an inch or so. And it's just got a nice um, molded plywood frame over that mirror. Uh, and then down we have the cherry wood countertop that I had put together. Um, I did have to treat this with a special product to make sure that you know it could hold up to the moisture in the room along with making sure that I caulked along the perimeter of the sink and along the backsplash area there so I didn't get anything you know go going into the back and um, creating any issues for me down the road. Um, this was a nice little jacuzzi sink that I picked up. I believe I got this at Lowe's uh, but I did do a lot of uh, going back and forth between the Lowe's and Home Depot's trying to find some of the different fixtures for things. And then like I had mentioned before, I had built the actual cabinet box myself. Uh, I installed, just with a little 3M tape, the uh, toilet paper holder, which has held up really well for a few years now. And then I just used some wood slats to put in the shelving there and uh, picked up a couple of these baskets at uh, the home goods store. Normally I'd have some of my personal stuff in there, but I kind of cleared some of that out for you guys. And then, you know, I just put towels, toilet paper. One of the other things I really love about the fact that I had this whole cabinet box open is I can slide my little scale right underneath it and just pull it out when I need it. So again, I actually get to use the floor space where my cabinet sits and before with that other built-in cabinet there, uh, I didn't have any use of the flooring underneath that space. So another little trick to kind of make more function out of that space. Now here's maybe something you guys could give me some help on. Um, putting a toilet shelf above the toilet here, uh, either one of those that slides on, which I'm generally not a fan of, or I don't know what you guys might think of uh, shelving over there just to actually build permanent shelving. Maybe let me know in the comments down below if you think there's something that that wall space could be uh, utilized a little bit better with. All right, and then just another little fun side note. I took an extra piece of the cherry wood that I had used to build the countertop and uh, made a window sill out of it. Uh, it's just sitting on the sill. It's not adhered in any way. So if I ever decided I wanted to get rid of it, I can just slide it right out. Um, and it sticks out just barely in front of the uh, window sill. So it gives it just a little bit of a profile, adds a little touch of color over here, along with my struggling plant. And, uh, you know, just another fun thing. It's, it's really easy to overlook something that you're, isn't part of your bigger remodel project. And like I wasn't doing a full wainscot or tiling along this whole wall, but there was no reason that I couldn't do just a little something to spice up the windowsill there. Now into the flooring and shower portion. This is a wood look tile from Dow Tile, uh, as well as a coordinating mosaic that's kind of almost a parquet look for the shower floor. Now I was fortunate that I was able to actually do a curbless shower. So you notice that basically you walk right in from the bathroom to the shower without having to step over any kind of a curb. The ability to do that is largely dependent on the drain placement because you have to make sure you have enough space from the floor to actually slope down to the drain. Depending on the type of slab that you have, if the drain's not already where it needs to be, there may be significant work to actually make the drain capable of doing a curbless shower. The reason you uh, generally have a curb is because you have to build up your shower pan to create the slope for it to get down to the drain and you don't have the ability to, to slope down from the slab height that the rest of the house is at. So I got lucky when I removed my old where my drain was already placed where it needed to be. Uh, otherwise, I would have just put a curb in. That's very standard, nothing wrong with a shower curb at all, but I do enjoy having this curbless shower. Now we move over here to my teak bench that needs a little bit of additional teak oil on it. But this was actually a gift given to me by a client um, that had had it just sitting outside in a little patio area for quite a while. Uh, and you can pick up teak benches like this uh, on Amazon or at some of your you know home stores. 
uh, and they work really well. I far prefer using something like this in a shower, um, especially in a small shower, as opposed to doing a built-in bench. Because again, we could see all the way into the back of the shower, as opposed to something that's permanently there and is impeding out into the room. If we decide we don't like it anymore, we can always remove it and we can add some additional design choices with uh, you know, the different colors and styles that the teak benches offer. But I just like the ability to have that bench without being fully committed to one and also still being able to keep more of your shower space. And then instead of having the exterior soap dish like we had before, we immediately uh, wanted to switch into putting a niche in here. Um, so for me, that's uh, a much cleaner way to do it. Again, we're, we're moving the room back as opposed to moving the room towards us. Um, and we just finished all these edges with a product called Schluter. Um, they make a whole bunch of different edge profile finishes for tile. Um, so I like to finish a lot of my showers with the Schluter metals as opposed to tiled bullnose. And then we've got on the actual walls themselves a 12 by 24 product from Dow Tile again. This particular one is called Imagica and we took it all the way up to the wall so that we can really stretch the room out. Uh, and then just standard um, fixtures from either Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, they're just Delta, uh, but they work real well for me. And I know some of you are probably wondering with the fact that there's no curb and also no door here, we have just this splash panel piece of glass. How well does the water stay in? Uh, and I don't really have an issue with it. Um, it, you know, it slopes to the drain and the water runs to the drain, but you do get some water that kind of splashes off your body. So I normally have a little uh, shower mat there. Um, and it's, it's never been an issue for me as far as, you know, having pooling water. Uh, one thing you would want to make sure that you're staying on top of is not having any buildup. Uh, where the drain is getting clogged and then you do start to get pooling um, but that's something that you want to be you know paying attention to regardless of what type of shower you have. Now another tool you can use to make a smaller space feel larger is to stick to lighter colors. So white or off-white paints, uh, white or off-white tiles in the shower walls, brighter tones, they reflect more light and they make an area just naturally feel bigger. I didn't personally employ that technique for my bathroom because I wanted something that felt a little bit more earthy, a little bit more masculine. So that's where I kind of went with more of a concrete tile look for the wall with a wood look on the floor. But I knew that I was sacrificing a little bit there by not going with something lighter. It's not a must, but it's just another trick that you can use to help brighten up and make a space feel larger than it is. All right, so to recap, guys, when we're working in a small space, and in this case, a small bathroom, some of the things that we can do to make it feel larger are to stretch it out into the far corners of the room by doing two things. Eliminating some of the physical obstacles that are in the bathroom so that we do literally have more reach into the corners and then also eliminating anything that impedes your line of sight such as moving from a shower curtain to a glass door uh, or moving from a cabinet box to something that's got more of an opened bottom shelf type of setup. Um, just little tricks there that allow us to see more of the bathroom and then as a byproduct the bathroom feels larger. We can also use lighter colors making the area feel a little bit brighter opens it up a little bit that way and also using larger format tiles so that we see less grout joints. It just kind of opens things up that way for us as well. And remember guys, one of the great things about a small space is that it requires a smaller budget. So we can get a little bit more liberal with some of our choices because even if a particular product like a tile on a wall is a couple dollars more than another product, we don't need very much of it. So those things don't add up nearly as dramatically as they do when we're doing larger areas with them. And there's no reason not to have fun with smaller spaces and putting something together that's creative, fun, reflects you, and you look forward to using on a day-to-day -day basis. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me. Comment down below with any of your thoughts or questions that you might have. And make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future. Again, my name is Robert. I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. And until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.